Hello, welcome in to today's video. We have a very interesting, fun setup. I am going to be swatching all of my eyeshadow palettes. We have a nice big stack here, a little bit wobbly. I have organized these by size, smallest at the top, biggest at the bottom, and there is no particular order for the palettes um, other than size. If some of them are, you know, nine pans, just put them how they stack nicely. We're going to be swatching everything today, uh, each palette one by one. And this is really meant to be a calming, relaxing video, something that you can go to if you're looking to fall asleep, relax, zone out, all of those kinds of things. So we're going to keep it nice and quiet, nice and easy. I will, you know, talk you through some of these palettes, but I would like to do my best to kind of keep things light. And I think when it's coming to this type of video, the relaxing, fall asleep, zone out kind of video, the longer the better. I'm also gonna do my best to keep the ads to a minimum so you'll have uninterrupted viewing. And let's just start. We are nice and zoomed in here. The first palette is this e.l.f. bite size. We are nice and zoomed in here. This is the e.l.f. bite size eyeshadow palette in cream and sugar. That swatch did not pick up. This is one that you can barely see, but it actually does show up really well on the eyes. This is really a moment of Swatches don't tell the whole story. I haven't used this palette in a hot minute and I forgot how amazing the shimmers really are. I'll be swatching, I'm left-handed Therefore, I have my left hand here. However, I don't have the arm space for on this arm for the rest of them. So we'll be switching it up. I really did forget how amazing the shimmers are in this palette and how just an easy everyday quad this is. I'm glad to have swatched this. Mm. 
Next up is my 3CE Overtake palette. I got this February of 2021. This one is my favorite shadow in the palette, and I think you can tell. I, this is my first time trying the brand, and I love every single shadow in here. This one's watched better right off the bat. Look at that shimmer. That wasn't even a particularly intense swatch. I also love this mat right here that I'm swatching now. It has a light, like it has a little bit of shimmer in it. Not a lot but it shows up like a basic matte on the lid. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I think that might be too much. Look at that color payoff. Oh man, these mats are buttery. Well, the swatches are a little bit messy. I'm mesmerized by these swatches and just how glittery and shimmery it looks. That is very much my cup of tea. The shimmers, like this is one of the palettes where there is not a dud shade. I said that at the beginning, but I think the swatches really speak for themselves. Yes, they're a little bit on the lighter side, but they really do build up on the eye. And those mattes are such a beautiful, beautiful formula. Oh, one thing I think that is notable is that this NARS palette is weighty. I didn't realize that. It does feel more substantial. It's like double the weight. This one here is my most recent palette purchase, which was from last fall. This might be my most unique palette that I own. Also, the mirror in here is quite nice. Like it's end to end. A nice light in my mugs. Let's swatch this thing. These mattes are also buttery. I think these are a much more buttery formula than the 3CE palette, but this is also a more expensive palette. So I would expect better performance. Look at that. Well, well, well. Ah. 
after I swatch these, I'll go clean my arm just a little bit better because I think there's some staining from the previous palette right here, you can see. Even this green swatches well. I have featured this green in another video. Everything swatches beautifully in this palette. Could there be more delicious swatches? Okay, here's the thing about this green that I don't think so I made a video with using this palette and the greens last year and I had trouble blending the green like it does feel really nice and you saw the pickup in my hand but you can see that this is one of the worst swatches in the palette although how, you know how something swatches isn't necessarily how it performs on the eyes but what I do want to say is that this is picking up more brown in real life than green like when you look at this this looks like a true green and i guess the top of this swatch is looking somewhat you know it's looking green but in real life it is looking it is looking gray actually not brown gray and then the last swatch here just look at that my goodness oh my god Oh my god. Oh my freaking that blue. Oh my god. If this oh, people. BRB. The next two palettes are probably the most chronically underused palettes in my collection and the first of them is this guy we'll zoom you back in now i only bring this out in the winter time and i've thought about decluttering this because it's basically my only seasonal palette and I can't justify getting rid of it because so many of the colors are just beautiful and they are they are unique to my collection in a good way. And every time I open this, I get reinvigorated, re-inspired. And you can bet that this palette will make an appearance come winter time. I think the only dud shade is this one. I don't love this shade. It feels kind of chalky. This one has always been my favorite shade in the palette. This is definitely an underutilized shade for me and I think that this would look nice with just like a matte underneath and then the glitter on top. This blue swatched really well. A 
Wow, that's silver. That's something special. Look at that. The other metallics in this palette just don't come close. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This shade. Amazing. Amazing. My swatches in this palette are particularly messy. Sorry. But what an interesting color story. I haven't swatched all of these together in a long time. And I think that this one, out of all of the palettes so far, is very texturally interesting. Oh my god, look, oh. I regret how I removed that. I'll just be shimmery shiny then, I guess. Next up, the Dominique Latte Palette. Okay, that was amazing. These are really pigmented, soft shades. Wow. You can really tell. Uh, I'm just blown away by some of these formulas. I don't often spend time, you know, playing with my makeup as much as this, this really feels like playing. And just in my opinion, you can tell so far what's the more expensive formula. Look at that. I remember her metallics being something really special. I don't know that this color story really stands out anymore. It's really basic. However, but the NARS ones, in my opinion, are a really amazing shiny formula. They're special, like they really are. And I'm not trying to cut down, we're trying to say that the, the formula for these aren't great because they're really nice, but the point I'm really trying to make is that it's not hard to make a good shimmer formula, in my opinion. I think what's harder is the mattes. And these mattes are incredible and they stand out and these are like everyday my colors. And I'm just really sad that I haven't taken the time to really play with this palette. This is one of my favorite palettes in my collection. One that gets a lot of use, although might not look like it. Let's just watch it. Let's just go in. I'm just, I'm like, I'm, I don't know, I'm hung up on this palette because it just surprised me how nice it is. So let's get into this. The 
I already know them. I, I really enjoy the metallics in this palette. Yeah, these mattes aren't great. Just in terms of feeling, doesn't mean that they can't perform well on the lid. I mean, they are, these mattes are showing up. And how matte feels or swatches doesn't dictate its performance or quality on the lid. I just think that, you know, with ColourPop, you're getting a decent formula. Oh, this one. This metallic is better than this one. You can feel it. Ooh, glitter. These are my tones, guys. These are my freaking tones. Wow. Like, it looks really beautiful in the pan, but then when I swatch them, it just reinforces my love of these kinds of colors. Ooh, that was like a, a beautiful feeling. Oh, this matte swatching is swatching better. Like it's creamier than all the other mattes so far. Okay, this one barely showed up. Can you even see it? I'm gonna just move on from that. Well, this was the really amazing color. This one I use all the time on my lids, usually what I'll start most looks with with this palette, but it's just like it's not showing up. Beautiful color story, truly beautiful. Next up, the Tartlet in Blue. I have been using this a lot recently. And this is a palette that's kind of old news for beauty YouTube. And I think that this palette for a lot of people is just, they don't reach for it or even think about it because it's old. But the formula for this, I do think stands up over time like it stands up really well over time i bought this in 2019 so i bought this later than most people like most people were already done thinking about this palette in 2019 i think the mattes they have a lot of pickup right away and they have a great feel to them the shimmers i think are okay like there are better shimmers out there I think if anything, the shimmers are older news, but there's only three of them in the palette. Majority of the palette is mattes, or are mattes, and they work really well. Like I'm just, I don't know, I feel like this palette, people are just brushing past it, it's old, not thinking about it, when it really still is great and stands up. Like these mattes are incredibly buttery. 
I think maybe a better term for these wouldn't be metallics, but just shimmers. Just look at that. Some of the better ones that I've swatched. Maybe what makes this palette old news for some people is just the color story. It's not exciting anymore. And I can get that, but I personally appreciate these basic, simple color stories because these are the bread and butter of a lot of looks that people do. I'm a big fan of this color story. And I'm like just as drawn to it now as I was in 2019, maybe even more so. We're at about the halfway point. Sweet Talk palette. I think my arm is just getting glitterier over time. I've come now, like some of the earlier palettes, they weren't swatching well, like the light shades weren't swatching well. But I'm very familiar with this top shade, one of the most used eyeshadows of the last three months. Didn't swatch particularly well but it shows up well in the eyes. So now I'm able to judge some of the other shades that didn't show up well a little bit better. I'm surprised that this one is looking as patchy as it is.
very pretty color story. I think I like this better swatched out than just looking at it in the pan. I'll be back. Everybody's favorite. Okay, this this is more like one of the most well swatched, most notable palettes on the internet. I haven't stuck my fingers into these mats in a long time. These are definitely not as nice as the NARS mask, <laughs> but I feel like as a frame of reference, everybody, a lot of people know this palette, not everybody, a lot of people know this palette and this formula. These are super pigmented. They don't feel great, but these are a very pigmented formula as we all kind of know. Whoa, 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 look at this one. This one swashed really well for a mat. I think I expected these to swatch better than they are. Just because of how well they show up on the eyes. Also, granted, this is the oldest palette that I own from you know, 2017. Yeah, I definitely expected better swatches from this palette. This is, um, I think, a big surprise. The mattes didn't feel great, they felt kind of dry, but they're still pigmented on the eyes to this day, like lots of kick up, lots of fallout. But they swatch just kind of mediocre. Not the best swatching palette out there. Really a testament that swatches aren't everything, friends. So, the next two palettes are my Natasha Denona palettes. the moment I currently have created my own color story with the two palettes so here's what I'm gonna do because I have not swatched this color story I've just kind of shown it I'm gonna do three swatches I'm gonna do a swatching of this color story of my own creation then I'm gonna put everything back and swatch each palette with all of its original shades. I can't guarantee that they will be in the same order as when I first bought the palette, but all the shades will be together.
and just for reference, here are all the shades that are left over. I don't know that to me this does not this does not appeal to me. So I'm not gonna swatch these. So the first three shades, these are all from Glam. These are Glam. These last two are retro. These two are retro. These three are Glam. These five are retro. I do think that this is an interesting color story. Look at these shimmers. I think they're amazing. The mattes, I mean, they swatched okay. This is a really buildable formula. And you can really feel the difference in some of the formulas. Like these two, same formula. Uh, as well as I think these two like one, two, three, four are same formula. And then these five, I think same formula. So here's the glam palette. I have created my own custom color story like I've shown in the past. This one's a little bit different than the previous one that I have. But all the colors are there. So let's do this thing.
So here's the color story. I just love these shimmers and you can absolutely build them up. You know, we're doing one swatch and I actually, these two, this one here and this one here, um, they look like darker in the pan, especially this one. Like I would do a single shadow look with this one. I wouldn't necessarily need to uh, build it up all the way, but I could do this all over the lid. I think it would be really nice. And even if it got too dark, I could put a little bit of this in the center of the lid. This is one of my favorite palettes. And one of the reasons for that is because of all of the one shadow looks that I can do. Uh, and this one here reminds me of the one shadow look I did with my Maybelline palette, except just much bolder. <laughs> On to retro. Look at that. Just, just look at that. Beautiful. palettes did you know other than Natasha Denona is to be able to rearrange them yourself I mean you know the NARS palette that I have is already expensive <laughs> you know why not give me the capability of switching some of the stuff around one I think one of the reasons why I'm able to fall in love with Natasha Denona palettes over and over again is because I get to I get to rearrange them and get re-inspired over and over and over again. A favorite. So, we have just two palettes left. The Nudes of New York palette. I did a one week one palette with this recently and I should have swatched it 
if I do more one week one palettes, I'll definitely swatch them in the future. Even, you know, I have all of my palettes swatched here. I think it's good to, to have that as part of the video for a frame of reference. So how we're going to swatch this one is as follows. This will be row one, row two, and then row three. These ones, not the metallics, but the mattes feel the chalkiest. And in that video, I definitely talked about the overlap of like these three shades and these two in particular right here, this one and this one, they look so similar. I mean, overall this palette doesn't swatch great, but if you've seen the video, it looks well on the eyes or looks good on the eyes. Last, but not least, the Cinnamon Swirl Palette. This one, I think, is the least used palette in my collection, simply because it's the newest, I think. And it also has a very fall autumnal color story. So I only want to use it this part of the year, and I got it in February. We'll start up here. Wow, that surprised me. I think a lot of people talk a lot of shit about the Too Faced formula or just Too Faced in general. I think there's good reason for that, but 
I don't think you can really knock their eyeshadow formula. Maybe some of their limited edition formulas. Okay, this one I've used quite a bit, but it's not showing up. Okay, there we go, a little bit better. The shimmer really reminds me of the Tarte shimmers. This one did not swatch well at all. Wow, that was a great swatch. Interesting. This shade here, I don't, like, it kind of bothers me, like, why this color? It just seems, like, really muddy. This one here has been my favorite shimmer in the palette. Everything is swatching surprisingly well. Like, <laughs> I, I am genuinely surprised by this. I really, I really am. see anything else in my collection swatched because I could do this with anything else that you might be interested in seeing let me know if you have any of these palettes what you thought of the swatches have you ever done anything like this with your own collection because let me tell you this was really fun and I feel like I've just gathered a lot of data Thank you for watching and hanging out with me today for this relaxing video, and I hope to see you again around here soon. Bye!